do some work on your wrist. Because then when you're playing, as we do in most contemporary environments now, pretty intensely, you know, you need to have the fingers under control for rebound, but you really have to have that ability with, with the wrist as well. So it's, you know. There's no fingers there at all, so when... So just, just work on different combinations of patterns, even going clockwise, anti-clockwise around toms. Let's not forget the pulse. I was playing the hi-hat, right? Mm -hmm, you, were. you always do. So that was my inner pulse right there. So you, even an exercise like that should groove, should have a feeling to it, you know. And I was changing phrasing. I started with eighth notes, went to, I don't know what I did, triplets, sixteenth. At the end it was sixty-fourth or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I was conscious of that so that it was all relative to a, you know, one, two, three, four, da 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 so, you know, you've got to build your wrist strokes as well as your finger strokes, you know. We focus a lot on finger strokes in, in drumming general, in general. Growing up, I never heard anyone talk about uh, wrist strokes and, until I had some lessons from Rob Carson, who was at the time, back in the 90s, he was the, the guy in the, in the drum corps world, you know, and sure. uh, incredible world champion. And, and now there are others who have, you know, followed and doing amazing things. But from that scene, you know, where their control in this, their, their ability to play just, you know, rudimental stuff on a snare is phenomenal. And he drew my attention to the importance for it. So I would start by, you know, this is a lesson in itself. I can't really go into the detail, but do some research and do some work on your wrist.